Hello, and welcome to CAD Designs. Today we're going to be working on a bracket drawing. It'll be the first of seven drawings in my 2D AutoCAD mechanical series. It'll be a simple introduction to using the AutoCAD interface, polar coordinate entry, and object snaps. Throughout this series, I'll introduce new drawing commands that build off of the previous drawings. The commands covered in the bracket drawing will be lines, circles, offsets, trim, and fillet. Also, I'll be using different layers throughout all of this series. Reference layers, center lines, and solid model layers. I'll try to break down my drawings into three steps. I feel that all 2D drawings can be broken down into three simple steps. Your reference lines, main features, and modifying features. Reference lines help me locate the main features or the structure of the part. Main features are the most important components of the part. They are located at the endpoints or intersection of the reference lines. And modifying features are the rest of the features that close in the shape or round off some edges. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the dimensions of the bracket drawing. If you want to download the documents in this series to have and print out before you start the drawing, Go to my page on Teachers Pay Teachers at CAD Shop by CAD Designs. The reference lines on the bracket drawing consist of four lines and an arc. The main features of the bracket drawing consist of eight circles. The modifying features of the bracket drawing consist of eight offsets, two fillets, and a couple of trims to clean up the drawing. All right, now let's go to AutoCAD and draw the bracket drawing. To do so, just create a brand new drawing based on the standard AutoCAD template. I personally like to draw with all of my drawing aids off. One other thing I like to do is set my zoom before I start drawing just to the standard size sheet. Z enter, A enter will zoom all and it'll set your upper bounds to about the size of a sheet of paper. I'm going to use three different layers in this drawing and to do so I'm going to go to layer properties and add the new layers. The first layer here will be reference lines I'm just going to call that ref. The second one will be center lines and the last one will be solid model where the actual part will go in. I like to set my reference lines color to magenta, my center line color to green, and also set my center line type. To do so, click on continuous where it says line type in the layer properties manager and load the center line type into your drawing. Be sure to select it before you hit OK so it actually updates inside your Layer Properties Manager. To set your reference layer to the current layer, in this box you can double click Ref and now close it. Another way would just be to drop down the different layers you've created and select Reference. The very first line that we're going to create is a reference line of 8 units long going from the left side of our page over toward the right. I'm going to draw a line, start on the left side of my screen, and to bring it 8 units over to the right, I'm going to use what we call polar coordinates. I'm going to give it a distance and an angle in which I want the line to go. Horizontally, going from left to right has no change in degrees, so the angle will be 0. To type that in, I'm going to type in Shift 2, or the at symbol, 8, and then less than 0. If you look down here on my command line, this is what I typed in at 8 less than 0, and when I hit enter, it'll give me a line 8 units long going to the right. The next reference line is going to be one coming back 4 units to the left. So again, shift 2, or the at symbol, 4 less than 180. 180 degrees brings you right back from the right side to the left. And now I'll hit escape. I want to start another line a line starting at this endpoint coming up here 15 degrees. I'll start the line command and to select this endpoint I'm going to hold down shift and click with my right mouse key to bring up the object snap dialog box. 
I want to choose endpoint, and the endpoint I want to choose is the original endpoint where we started. And again, to get a line at 15 degrees, I'll use polar coordinates. The drawing doesn't tell me how long the line is. I prefer to choose 9 for this length. So shift to 9 less than 15. I'm going to hit escape to create my next line. Again, I'm going to draw a line starting at this endpoint. So shift right mouse key endpoint. Some of you may know about this drawing aid of object snap. Again, I prefer not to draw with it as I'm teaching. That way people get used to other elements of AutoCAD. This next line that we're drawing is going to go up 60 degrees more than this previous line. Now our first line was 15 degrees off of horizontal, so we have to do some quick addition and find that our angle will be 75 degrees. So shift to 9 less than 75, it will give us that second diagonal reference line. If your line goes off the page, that's fine. You can roll down to zoom out. You can even hold down your center mouse wheel to pan around to get everything back onto your screen. We have one more reference line. It's going to be an arc. That arc will come through this area, and it'll let me know where the center of my curved slot goes. You'll also notice that on the drawing that it is a dashed line. That dashed line is a special type of reference line, and that's a center line. So I'm going to swap to my center line layer. Drop down your layer list and choose the word CL, and it'll go into that layer to where the next object we draw will be a center line type. It's a circle with a radius of 7, so I'm going to drop down circle and choose center radius. The center of this circle is again centered at this endpoint. So shift right mouse key endpoint, select that, and the value of this radius will be 7. Just type in 7 and hit enter. You might also notice that these bottom two lines are special lines as well. If you take a look at the bottom two lines in our bracket drawing, you'll notice that they're center lines as well. Center lines are special reference lines that tell us things are symmetrical about those lines. Highlight those two, drop down your layer list, and choose center line, and it'll place those lines into our center line layer. Now we're ready to start our main features. Our main features and the rest of the drawing will go into our solid model layer. So again, drop down your layer list, choose solid model. And I'm going to start over here on the left side of the page. I have a circle on the inside of my part, and it tells me that it has a diameter of 3 quarters of an inch. To draw a circle with a diameter, drop down circle, choose center diameter. The center will be at the endpoint of that reference line, so shift right mouse key endpoint. Select that endpoint, and now type in 3 quarters. Don't type in 0.75. I don't want you to do any math. I want you to use your number pad off to the right hand side of the computer and type in 3 divided by 4. Let AutoCAD do the math for you. There will be no mistakes. I know 3 quarters is a very easy one to turn into a decimal, but the next one we're going to type in might be a little more challenging. If you look over here to the right side of the screen, we're going to have a radius of 3 eighths. Drop down circle, choose center radius. It'll be at, again, the end point of that reference line. And I'm just going to type in 3 divided by 8. Back here at the end of this line that we drew back for, for the center of my other slot, I have another circle that's the same size. A nice little trick of AutoCAD is that since center radius was my last command that I chose, if I hit enter, it's going to start that previous command. Now it wants me to specify the center. I'm going to choose shift for mouse key endpoint. And also, it uses the last radius that I chose, so all I need to do is hit enter. Two more circles have the same size, one at the intersection up here, one at the intersection over here. If I hit enter for the last command, shift right mouse key intersection this time. All I need to do is hit enter for the last radius. Enter for the last command, shift right mouse key intersection, and again, enter for the last radius. Three more circles I need to draw. One for the outside of the bracket here, 
one for the outside off to the right, and one for the outside up top. All of those circles are the same radius. If you look closely though, it does not specify that this outer left edge has a radius of one. In mechanical drawings, if a radius or if a dimension can be implied anywhere else in the drawing, then we don't want to over-dimension the drawing. So this radius on the outside of this circle here is implied by the value that we have off to the right side of our page. So again, circle center radius, shift right mouse key, end point. This will be a radius of one. Since they're all the same, I'm gonna hit enter, shift right mouse key, end point off to the right, enter for a radius of one. Enter to start the circle command, shift right mouse key, intersection, and again, enter for that radius of one. Our main features have now been drawn and we're ready to complete the drawing by doing our modifying features. Our modifying features finish the drawing, complete the part, and clean everything up. I'm going to start with this slot down here. To give me my top and bottom edges of this slot, one might say that I would just draw a line from the top part of the circles together. Those are called quadrants. But I want to teach you a command called offset. Offset creates a parallel or concentric object a set distance away from an object that you select. I'm going to take this line of four and I'm going to create a parallel object above and below it to where it touches the tops and bottom of the circle. The distance from the center of a circle to the top or the center of a circle to the bottom is the radius. So I'm going to start the offset command and offset that line up and down the radius of that inside circle. The offset command can be found up here inside your modify panel, but I like to use my keyboard. It's a little bit quicker. O, enter, starts the offset command. It's asking me for the distance and the radius of that circle was 3 eighths, so 3 divided by 8. Now if I select this line of 4 and I choose above, select the line of 4 and I choose below, it's going to create an offset of that line that just touches the top and bottom of my circles. Those two new objects are in the center line layer. I want to select them and change them to the solid model layer since they are part of my actual bracket part. Now I want to clean up what's inside of here. So I'm going to use the trim command. You can find trim up here in the modify panel or you can use the keyboard shortcut. TR enter starts the trim command. One more enter gives me a select all. So if I just choose any of these objects on the inside, it will trim them. I could also use a green crosshatch and select those objects in one selection. Now that our inner slot is trimmed out, I'm going to use this line of eight and I'm going to create my upper and lower bounds of my brackets exterior part. I'm going to start the offset command and offset at the radius of those outer circles, which is one. So O enter, one enter. Select this line, choose up, select the line, choose down. And just like before, move those two new objects into the solid model layer. I'm going to start the trim command, TR, enter, enter. And I'm going to green crosshatch through the right side. But when I get to the left, I need to be very careful. If I were to green crosshatch, I might lose more than what I want. So I'm going to individually select the objects I want trimmed. These three lower portions of the outer circle, plus this little piece that sticks on the inside. The reason I showed you the offset command is because we're going to do the exact same thing with this center line arc for our circle of a radius 3 eighths and our circle of a radius of 1. If we just drew lines, the option to get these arcs just perfect would be drawing arcs and doing math. I like to have AutoCAD do that for me. So I'm going to offset by 3 eighths, O enter, 3 eighths enter. This green arc out and in, and just like before, put them into the solid model layer. 
We have a little bit more fancy trimming to do this time around. But again, TR, enter, enter. And I'm going to trim the interior side of this slot. My slot does not extend past this 3 8 circle, so I'm going to trim those objects off beyond it. The outside portions we'll get rid of with a delete in a little bit, but let's work our way down inside and trim out the interior side of that slot. On the exterior side, those curves do not extend past. And over here, we got to be careful. First, trim off this little piece, and now the larger portion. That way, you don't have to come back and delete it later. I'll show you that in just a bit. I can now come and select the outer portions of that arc and get rid of them, and then move on to my larger offset for the outside of the bracket. O enter, one enter. For this outside arc, we'll go toward the outside and on the inside. And now I'll put both of those into my solid model layer. Again, a little bit of fancy trimming, TR enter enter. We'll get rid of these inner portions and the outer portions of our arcs. And I'm going to leave these here for a little bit later. What I was talking about earlier is if we didn't trim off the smaller segments, I can't trim this segment off. It won't get any smaller if I try to trim it. So I must hit Escape, select it, and delete it to get rid of that object. This arc and this arc don't end where they currently do. We have two more objects finishing off our part, making them a little bit more smoother. And those are called fillets. Fillets come from the type of weld where you fill in material. To start the fillet command, hit F enter. And you want to set a radius. To do so, hit R enter. The outside fillet's radius is 3 quarters of an inch. So type in 3 divided by 4. Hit enter again to set that radius. Now we want to fill it from this curve to this outer curve. So just go select those two curves. On the inside, we have a larger radius. A radius of 1 and 5 eighths. So again, start the fillet command with F enter. Set the radius with R enter. And now to type in a mixed fraction of 1 and 5 eighths, use your number pad and type in 1 dash 5 divided by 8. Look down here in my command line and you'll see what it looks like. It's the minus sign. Hit enter to set that radius and select on our inside arc and our upper line and it'll fillet that curve all the way around. You'll notice that fillet trims as well. So I didn't bother trimming this line as it extended past our other object. We're done with the modifying features of this part. I just want to clean it up by getting rid of this outside portion of our centerline arc. Previously, I drew this line and this line nine units long. The reason I did that was because it looks good. Our center line stops here seven units away from our center endpoint. The part went one unit past, and so I wanted to continue my line one more unit long. So seven plus one is eight, plus one more is nine. I just think that looks good. If I want to trim this line one unit beyond our bracket, I need a boundary to trim it off of. To get that, I just offset this outside curve by one. So O enter, one enter. Select this curve, offset it out, and now I have a nice edge that I can trim this line here upon. TR, enter, enter. Select that curve. It trims it, but now go ahead and get rid of that trimming edge. We don't need it. You're now done with the bracket drawing. To clean this up, I'm just going to zoom extents, Z enter, E enter, to have it centered on my screen. Go ahead and save your drawing and be sure to come back to my next tutorial.